Just like whack rappers rely on auto-tune to stay relevant, Joe Biden's campaign might need artificial intelligence to keep him in the spotlight. In a military uniform. I'll be frolicking around in a pink uniform, though. Huffington Post headline, it's time for the Biden campaign to embrace AI. We are living that dystopian novel. This is the digital version of The Hunger Games. Kai Van Schroff, a guest writer for Huffington Post, suggests that given Biden's recent debate struggles and the cutthroat nature of modern elections, the campaign needs every tool available. Using artificial intelligence could transform Biden's public image, ensuring he connects with voters more effectively despite physical limitations. This is a real article, not satire. This is not a joke. According to Schroff, AI augmentations and video renderings could serve to smooth out these bumps while allowing the Biden campaign to effectively disseminate true information about the state of our democracy and the Biden administration's accomplishments. This dude is advocating for the puppet show. When your candidate makes Ozzy Osbourne sound coherent, you know it's time for a tech upgrade. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you you wit you could you do you wit you Shroff states AI can generate polished videos, enhance speeches, and respond quickly to misinformation. This would allow the campaign to respond rapidly to current events because basically all you would have to do is type in what you want to say. Biden wouldn't even know what he's saying. I can imagine the future of politics they parade Joe Biden 2.0 out. The only way I pregame is with an ice cold Bud Light. So good. Ah, happy Friday. Then they say there's a new version. It's going to be Joe Biden 3.0 with fewer crashes, more stability. It would be like upgrading from a Windows 95 PC to an M3 MacBook Pro. Shroff notes that the Republican Party has already embraced this technology and is using AI in their attack ads against the president. Who are they talking about? They're talking about the infamous Dilly meme team. The Dilly meme team is in their head, rent free. By not using these tools, the Biden campaign risks being outmatched in the tech arena. So the Dilly meme team, if you don't know, is the team of memesters. Trump just had a rally today in Miami, and they played one of the Dilly meme team memes before the rally. They're so lit, they're so good, well edited. That one, I don't think it had any AI in it, but friend of show, C3P meme, is one of the best at it. You go to my homepage, you got you see the Trump and son. He did all that with AI and editing. They're saying, we want some of that action. These people want to use it as an actual reality booster, a fake reality. The Dilly Meme team uses it to make jokes. Postmodernism, we're here. Shroff points out that media outlets like the New York Post have engaged in sharing deceptively cropped viral videos of the president dubbed cheap fakes. So that was a mistake from Kareem John Pierre, and they turned it into a real term. I see you. They're lying, though. There was no editing on these things to make him look confused or weak. We already know he's confused and weak. They are saying AI-generated videos presenting accurate information. What that really means is their information could be the countermeasure to cheap fakes and deceptive editing. If you can't beat them, join them. Can uh, back at like act into law. Acquire power, and then you know what these people are going to do. They will make it illegal for anyone else to do it except for the government and their overlords. Kind of like their position on violating the First and Second Amendments. Rules for thee, but not for me. They are very narrow with those interpretations for you and I. For them, it's broad interpretation. Politicians, they're running for public office. They can say whatever they want. You can't sue them. Oh, Second Amendment, we can take away your guns, but they walk around with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of security guards at all times. Their positions come down to the politicians having protection, in this case, AI, and citizens not. It's a really cloudy day. In fact, it was raining a little bit here in Malibu. And the water ha has, looks like there's, you know, um, like laundry soap in it. Like it's sunsy kind of. Makes sense because AI is the pen that's mightier than the sword. The positive thing about this is they will want to make it illegal. That's what all those meetings are for. Kamala Harris is actually in charge of the AI stuff. It's impossible. It is impossible for the government to control AI. That's why I'm a pro-transhumanist.
Shroff continues to highlight that AI can produce high-quality content efficiently, allowing the campaign to respond rapidly to current events, misinformation, and the fast-paced news cycle. Because modern campaign strategy has become an arms race between AI-generated truth and a tsunami of viral nonsense. We drive various control of the gas and the brake. I know we both steer, obviously. And then I'm in charge of the clicker. The blinker. I think for YouTube videos, eventually, within a year, most YouTube videos that are recorded, not live, they will be faceless because the voice cloning technology is going to be able to clone your own voice easily with natural pauses, inflections, and you wouldn't even be able to tell. It will sound crisp, clean. You could even adjust your voice a little bit and make it sound deeper or higher pitch, however you want to do it, or just clone like James Earl Jones, and you write your script out, tell it when you want the pauses or whatever, or say randomize the natural sound of it, and you literally will not be able to tell. Tell her she looks cute when you see her. Just do it, okay? It's like, I'm your bro. Tell me I look cute. So no YouTuber is going to do a video. They're going to do audio only, do edits, B-roll. Mark my word. The twist here is that Shroff is right. And Americans know it. That's why the pens are more popular today than they've been in decades. The American public is so easily swayed that using AI, like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain, will keep them happy. Look at John. Pennsylvania's Democratic Senate nominee John Fetterman was seen using a closed captioning device, as he has in some settings since his stroke in May. Fetterman, despite his health issues, he's been using proprietary software to communicate because his brain doesn't work and no one cares. Even MAGA supporters are behind him now because he's SIO. If Fetterman can pull off a political comeback with the help of software, as long as he just stops crashing his car into people, allegedly, Biden's campaign could turn him into the political version of Siri, always there, always listening, and never making sense. No wonder they want to integrate ChatGPT, OpenAI. This could literally turn Biden into a Pinocchio puppet. We still don't know who's pulling the strings, but at least he won't trip over them. It would be so funny to watch them avoid a real-life press conference or debate being recorded. How jarring would it be for you to see Biden speaking perfectly and then watch real-life reality and the cognitive dissonance hit you all at once? Each time I see a little girl of five or six or seven... At least if we went to this AI stuff, the press corps could stop pretending to be angry and go back to playing dumb about his mentally incapacitated state. I'm all for the AI. Let me know what you think. Are you for it? Are you against it? Do you agree with me that it's unstoppable? I think it's the tool of the revolution. It's populist. It's distributing power to as many people as possible. The Biden campaign is facing unprecedented challenges, as you can see. Embracing AI, as Shroff says, they can ensure the president's message is heard clearly and accurately. He did not lie. They can combat the deluge of misinformation from their perspective, he did not lie. The stakes are really high, he did not lie. What if they're already using AI to clean him up and he really sounds this bad anyways? Middle MAGA.